this better have worked. I... I... Oh, I actually still have my stream up in the background, and... Oh, that almost immediately paused. Let me see. Okay, that seems to be doing okay. It's only at 23 and climbing frames. Oh my god, I swear I am going to... Uh... Anyway, let's... I don't know what's wrong with it. The... My internet's fine. I didn't have this problem until I... swapped over to... the new o version of OBS. Why the hell is it that every time... Every time OBS updates, it manages to break absolutely everything in half. This is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, let me... I'm going to try one more thing to... Wait, okay, it's going down now. I'm just going to keep on going, and if I find... Whoever is responsible for these OBS issues, I'll strangle them then. Because this is just so aggravating. All I wanted to do was was move to the fancier way to connect VTube Studio to my stream. And that, of course, involved updating v2 obs the latest version and it's back up to 41 percent i might just uh... okay i am going to kick this sphero's face in and while i do that do one more thing oh dang it It makes perfect sense, but it turns out I cannot... I cannot, uh, hot swap... <laughs> ...network settings in the middle of a stream! Okay, if it doesn't improve soon... If it doesn't improve soon, then I'm just going to... ...straight up... straight up just drop it and work on it tonight instead of streaming. Because I swear, it... It's the weirdest thing that every time OBS has some... How many birds do you have in your pockets, sir? This is a concerning amount of birds. I know, it... It's so awful that OBS seems almost incapable of updating without just this these catastrophic test issues. I wonder what it is. Like, are there so many deprecated features between the last version and the new one that it it's nearly incompatible and you have to, like, reset everything? Or... Is it just bad to... Okay, I am dropping every other frame. Uh... Let me check something. Oh, wait, I think I have to actually talk in order to hear anything on my end. Okay, it seems to be fine despite OBS telling me half of my frames just aren't getting through. So I guess we're rolling with this despite how awful it feels. But yeah, that's about how my day's been going. <laughs> uh, there's been so many little things that have 
Well, it's not even... It wasn't even that bad of a day. <laughs> like, in all honesty, it was a fine day. It's just within the past hour, things have very quickly gone to shit. <laughs> uh, I have... I guess it's a weird thing of... If a little thing... A bunch of little things, when you're tired, ramp up so much worse than a whole lot, than a couple large things when you actually have the energy to deal with that shit. <laughs> but I'm hoping that it's okay now. The I tried listening back to my stream live to test it to see if it was really choppy, and it seems like at the very least, the voice audio is going through. The good thing is that with a game like this, uh, it doesn't matter if the FPS gets absolutely kicked in the pants on account of how the FPS has already been kicked by the pants by nature of what we're doing. <laughs> uh, which, speaking of what we're trying to do today, aside from go completely insane, irrevocably, and just... I don't even know what the third thing is. We're trying to get all the HMs and beat the last of these gyms, because goddamn we are close to the end. So after this, all we have left is... Well, after we get all the HMs, that is. We have Blaine on Cinnabar Island, which is a whole pain in the ass to get to, because let me tell you, you have to go through a sea route, which is basically just a cave. And an actual cave, which is not much better. A maze. And then you actually have to go through the gym. No, wait, first you have to go through Pokemon Mansion before that. There's a lot of obstacles between the 7th gym and the 6th. It's a time. Also, welcome in, Gabe, and I hope that you're still... ...hanging around through this hot garbage. This inflamed refuse. This several other clever synonyms for dumpster fire. And I hope that you're doing well tonight. <laughs> okay, I just straight on do not understand what... I, I'm trying not to look because I'm thinking, it's fine, it's fine, everything's good. Well... <laughs> it's working, more or less. But every time I look over, the brain it, it's just dropping more there's no good reason i checked the internet it's connected it's working well i <laughs> the bit rate is well more or less at the level of streaming it i swear i would ask if it's that if it is, really is this hard to, like, make an update that doesn't break everything. But it seems like it is. It's... <laughs> it gives me a theory. A theory that everyone who's... Ama like, every streamer who has quote-unquote made it... Is a flaming masochist. Training tips. Press the A or B button to stay in place while on slope. I love how this is the only place... Uh, I should talk about Cycling Road, because I do love this version's... Uh, this version's Cycling Road is. It's the only place in the game that... is on a slope. Like, I am not touching any... Hey, Ace, I really hope that... <laughs> That the stream is watchable because I updated OBS and it's a shit show. But how are you doing uh, this very early morning for you? Hope you're doing well. 
everyone go follow Ace. She does a lot of fun content. It is generally a joy to be around. We're going insane here. Well, more insane than normal. Wait. But hey, at least I know that the chat's working. Seems fine to me. Thank God, because I am at 43% drop frames and a bit rate of three... Zero! It just dropped to zero! For one glorious moment there, I had no bits going. <sighs> but yeah, I am... <laughs> I'm glad to hear that it's working. <laughs> Somewhat. <laughs> Yeah, no problem. You're always around, and it's nice to see people in chat. Keep an eye out. Okay, good. Because it is... Okay, this right here. The, this glorious little thing. Why have they not kept doing that for later Pokemon games? Of when the opponent uses Minimize, they just are tiny for the entire rest of the fight. Just a glorious thing. Now, hope you're doing well. I... My brain is short-circuited and gone in circles. We're just slowly biking up this hill, picking fights every second of the way, and let me tell you, when I played this game, like, first time as a kid, I was, was like, oh, shoot, that's kind of funny how it's slow you go up this hill. But now that I've, like, I actually do road biking as a, I suppose the closest thing to physical fitness that I do, and even the smallest hill is absolute murder. Especially if you get, like, a really bumpy area where officially partner with Mert. Holy shit, that is amazing! That I can't wait to see what <clears throat> sort of merch comes out with that. I am I'm excited. I hmm. I don't know. I guess the first <laughs> the first thing I thought of is if there was an impaw mug. I would totally get that, which is the weird thing. I don't drink coffee at all. I barely remember to drink tea. Oh, shoot. I was going to make some ginger tea today, and I completely forgot. I should do that before the ginger root I got goes moldy. Ow! But for some reason, I seem to collect a stupid amount of mugs. <laughs> but now that is... Ah, there's so many exciting things happening. Oh, thank God we're done with the hill. <laughs> I... I can only imagine how on fire y your character's legs are right now. Because that's a long hill. Now it... It's... It's always fun to see, like, what people have planned. The, I know a couple people have, like, new model reveals. Uh, a few have shared excitedly, like, this is a work in progress I got, or I am waiting for this son of a bitch to be rigged, or like this with, we have merch on the way. Holy shit, that is two levels up here. <laughs> The sheer amount of growth that this Pikachu is having is unreal. We started at level 65. <laughs> hey, Nerf. Yeah, I can see that. It's... It is a big investment, and uh, there's always... I suppose it's true for every sort of content creation. They, there's this voice in the back of your head of... What if this completely fails? I know I'll buy something for sure, like... If for nothing else, I do want to say to have something and just say, heh, friend made this. <laughs> or yeah, yeah, wearing some of my friends' merch. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. Like, oh, God, my brain is. Maybe the drop frames count on OBS is not linked to my stream. 
but linked to my brain. Because that feels right. But I have a feeling that you'll be able to move a good amount of merch. Especially the floor food stuff. <laughs> oh, hey, Bredman. How are you doing today? I hope <laughs> better than me, because... Pokemon Yellow? Oh, Pokemon Yellow is, uh... Technically the fourth Pokemon game in Gen 1? Because the first... The original release was... I don't think I'm too small of a stream for merch, but promise community. Yeah, I get that. And there is the there's the weird feeling of what counts as uh like like I've seen large streamers, quote unquote, with less I suppose community activity if that makes sense. Or just generally, uh, a, not sure how to explain it, but, but it's like a lot more interest, and that makes a big deal of difference. Just Pokemon game. <laughs> no, it's, uh, the, suppose, remaster of the original Red red, blue, and green releases, where they took elements from... Yeah, interactions. That's the word. Like, larger communities with a vibe that... That... I guess a vibe that less people would be interested in merch in smaller communities. Something like that. But yeah, this is, uh, Pokemon Yellow was kind of the re-release. They improved a lot of the, a lot of, uh, the artwork they brought into one more coherent art style. Uh, they rebalanced levels, move lists, trainers. They also brought a whole lot of references in from the anime, which is why... Your starter Pokemon's a Pikachu that once I get off of this bike, you'll see follows you around. Uh, Jesse and James from the anime show up several times and you send them blasting off. And a lot of gym leaders had their uh, teams completely readjusted to be closer in line with what they showed in the anime. It's a it's also my first Pokemon game, which has a lot of sentimental value, because I got it for free because I found it on the ground in front of my home's mailbox. <laughs> I played Infinite Fusion. I haven't. I have seen a lot about it, notably that there is the, like, kind of cheap fourth wall break that will read the user <laughs> name off of your computer's user folder. Oh, hey, a Snorlax. But also... Pikachu. He loves me. <laughs> but it does seem interesting. I believe I saw that it was like, uh... Every Pokemon was a fusion Pokemon instead of... Like when you can... Those that you can run through a generator and... Merge them together into some weird cursed thing. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Is that like... Oh... It's great. I'm dead inside. This game has killed me. Or it is wild and was probably made on drugs. Because <laughs> both are amazing. Uh, do I have a Snorlax? Nope. <laughs> if I don't, I definitely don't have this one. <laughs> Big yawn, Snorlax, turn to the mountains. <laughs> it's blurst. Yes! Okay, this is just going to make it... Nope. Uh, still not there. This is just going to make things a whole lot easier because the cut HM's back here. Somewhere. Oh, yeah. How do you get in? Good effort. <laughs> There's just a home back here. Which I would... I would love a... House like that right on a good bike path? 
Hell yeah. Oh, you found my secret treat. Please don't tell anyone I'm here. Make it up to you with this. Yes! You can fly. Which, that's the first of the last three HMs that I need. Oh, I need to charge your phone. Yeah, thank, thank you so much for coming by and uh, it dies completely. Good luck. Oh shoot, I need... I need a bird. <laughs> I need a bird and I also should probably de decide what to evolve my Eevee into. <laughs> You, sir, are not a bird. I probably have a bird in the box. Is this... Okay, that's good. It... It seemed to have smoothed out. I... I have no idea what it was, but... I suppose... Anyone with notifications on will... See that, uh... This is the second attempt I've tried to go, on, go live with. Yeah, it doesn't say that I'm dropping anymore, so maybe it was just something with my internet? I swear, if the pro whole problem was just... Oh yeah, you were actually downloading something in the background. <laughs> Alright. Uh, deposit... Oh, if I actually leveled up the Charmander, I probably could have used him. Let's put... Nah. Fortunately, it'll have to be Eevee, but... Let's see, Ghastly, Nidoran, and Ratty... Pidgey? Could? Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, I should probably also explain. I got completely distracted by everything else that... What we're doing this game, and the reason why there are those three breads and a Pokeball down below, is that I am doing a... Oh, sweet, Pidgey can. A uh, Nuzlocke run of this game, where it, when Pokemon Scarlet and Violet came out and everyone was severely disappointed, as they should be, because the, there's so many... Honestly, wild uh, visual glitches and, well, glitches in general in that game, I decided that, well, I realized something. All Pokemon games have been horribly, horribly buggy and jank. And to prove it, uh, hang on just a moment. Uh, had to put something back on. I decided that I would play through the first game only using the starting Pikachu, plus the support staff of a whole bunch of other things, because you need HMs in this game, and there are five of them, none of which can be given to the same Pokemon. So in order for it to be possible, I did have to use a, a full team for HMs and stuff like that. But we're going through the game with only fighting... Oh! Alright, you can get at the Pokemon Zoo here all, like, references for a whole bunch of Pokemon that are a bit rare or possible to go through without seeing. But yeah, we are attempting to beat the game with just one. And it's going stupidly well. Like, this is a level 67 Pikachu. I think the last gym was 40. I'm pretty sure it's possible to, to go through the entire game <laughs> without... or beat the game with, like, a level 70 team. And, yeah. So use Safari Zone in this 4 zone, use zone with different kind of Pokemon, use Safari Balls to catch them, run out of time or Safari Balls, it's game over for you, blah, blah, blah. 
yeah, let's do this. Also, because there's, you know... Uh... <clears throat> HM's back here. Holy shit, I'm loaded! <laughs> it's like... 132,000 is... That's still a good amount. But, yeah. Let's see. Catching Pokemon to take home as gifts. I do love the Safari Zone as... Oh, I love it. The... He's in a... Com... This girl's boyfriend's in a completely different shack wondering where the hell she is. <laughs> but the fun thing with the Safari Zone is that there's a... Kind of a stupidly easy trick to it. Well, not for catching Pokemon themselves. But rather to abusing how the game cap calculates your time. Every step you take counts down the timer, which... The heads attract each other and spin around. No more... I think it's like no more than six heads. Something. <laughs> So, if you get into, like, if you do this, I'm pretty sure it still counts as moving around and can generate Pokemon. It does not, however, uh, count the timer down at all. Meaning, if you're at a good point, you can just spam that in, like, a corner somewhere. And keep on going until you run out of Pokeballs. Or until you find, like, the super rare ones, like a Kangastan or Dratini in here. Pokemon with the one-track mind. Once it charges, it won't stop running until it falls asleep. <laughs> How does that even work? <laughs> Just keeps on going and, like, oh, uh, time to sleep. And turns into a cruise missile or something. <laughs> uh, let's see. Center area, north area too. But they also did something interesting in that you do have to go through this... The zone in this game. Oh, guess we're catching this. Because there are actually two HMs... Hidden away in here. Which one is... They're explicitly saying, oh yeah, there's a promotion. Ooh, Carbus. It's a promotion. If you find the secret lodge, you'll get a fabulous prize. Whereas the other one, you have to use Surf, which is one of the two that you get in here, to find the other one. Which... And the other thing is that this... Uh... Oh, TM37. I think I'm really... I'm set with my... Ooh, a Taurus. I'm set with my move set because I have on Pikachu a Thunderbolt, thun, Thunder Body Slam, which is like one of the best moves you can have. Oh, it ran. And then Agility, which can be used for an absolutely glorious bug. If you. So this game had a interesting thing where... Oh, what do you got? I mean, did you catch? I'm bush from the work. Where if you, uh... Every badge has a stat increase associated with it. That normally it'll increase, like, one of the core stats by 12.5% or something. But... Ah, dang it. It got me. They did a faulty check with this. If you have a stat increasing move like agility, which it raises evasiveness, but actually counts, and Pikachu does know that, it will once again apply that stat boost up to a maximum of six times. Which means that just by becoming... Not only will I be impossible to hit... I will hit like a freight train. 
and take no damage. It's one of the many amazing bugs in this game. Oh, dang it! Hit the button too fast! And that's not even, like, the truly... Oh, 137 left. I don't think I'm going to actually be getting to the... Getting one of the HMs this time, but I have enough money that I can just keep on going. Alright, another eye horde. Now, one thing that I have wanted to bring up... Well, actually, the first thing I want to bring up is that I've recently upgraded some of my equipment, and... <laughs> so for a while, I was thinking about, but like, no, I'm not going to get a boom arm for my mic. That just seems a little unnecessary. The desktop mount works perfectly fine, and I'd either need an adapter or an entirely new mount if I changed... <laughs> Changed microphones at some point, and then I impulse bought it. Oh, deepest part. So yeah, you have to like run to it. And run out of time if you try for all of them at once. <laughs> like, I literally just had in my mind, hmm. Boom arms are kind of fun. What do they do? Looked it up. Oh, keep it away from desktop noise, gets it closer to your face. Then I looked it up a bit more. Hey, it comes with a pop filter. Oh, this is awesome. Dang it. Got yoinked. You good all? Come in. I will. God damn, can we do this a whole lot? <laughs> but I, I honestly have no idea why I bought it. The justification I, I gave myself is, well, a pop filter will help things, and I should... It'd be really nice to have any, you know, anything to improve audio quality. I have no idea if it was working, <laughs> so I'm going to have to watch this VOD, this VOD back in... Oh, dang it, I actually need a Nidorino. And see, after the exhaustion, the cursing the heavens and the developers behind the new new version of OBS to see if that actually worked. Especially because earlier it sounded like I it wasn't, but I think I was just really tired <laughs> and sick of dealing with it, so I just sounded quieter. So I've only recently put it back on. Uh, let me throw a rock at you. I question... I question how good of a nature preserve this this place is. Actually, no, it's an awful nature preserve. That's probably a big reason that Safari Zones kind of disappeared after a certain point. <laughs> because the connotations of people going into, first of all, a nature preserve, and at least in like Emerald and those games, an explicit national park, and Annoying, agitating, and throwing rocks at the local wildlife. Like, that is just, uh... Not cool. <laughs> oh, um... Uh, hmm, another Pokemon item. Yeah, so hopefully this works well, and I'm probably going to have a couple streams of... On average, more jank audio as I try to figure out how to position things in a way that it goes well, because this is just kind of hanging in front of my face now. It's super cool and actually kind of gives me some more desk space. <laughs> oh, and there goes Anita Arena. Get down. But well, the other thing is that I mentioned this earlier when I was talking about what yellow uh, is. And one of the cool things they did for this is... Is it down here? They unified the art style and direction. 
for this game, because beforehand, when they were in the concept stage for what Pokemon was, they got a lot of different artists. I've heard, like, every Pokemon had a different artist behind it, or... Or just, they've had a lot... An artist for every line, or something like that. But the point is that... It was a bunch of artists knocking out raw concepts. Of, oh yeah, this could be a Mon. Oh yeah, this could be one. If you've ever seen beta Pokemon designs, there are some that would have been so cool but got axed from the game. Like, Ninetales line had, was a three Pokemon lines with, with a baby Mon before Vulpix. Oh, I wanted to throw a rock. I, that still sounds awful. It, it's, it's so awful that you can just do that. <laughs> But also the the balls of people, especially later when they explicitly say, "Hey, you can't go into tall grass without your Pokemon, or else you're going to get jumped by a wild Mons." You just go into these places, not send any Pokemon out, and throw rocks to enrage these things. <laughs> Resting deep in its burrow, Thorn, it's always retract. This is proof that it's relaxed. Cool. Like, maybe if you want to be technical of uh, what they're actually logically doing, it would make sense that, no, the Pokemon is out if something needs to happen. It's There's like a deterrent, which is why they run away. Actually, that makes a, a whole lot of sense. Like, you're out here walking around with your Pokemon outside your ball. Like, actually, I would Pikachu. Is this deep spar as far as um... Oh, I... Dang it! I got turned around. <laughs> I don't think I'm getting it this time. It's up here, I think. But, yeah. Uh, back to what I was talking about before I got distracted. One, ooh, a Kangastan. I, these are stupid hard to catch. Yeah, because they run, these and, Kangastans run on the first turn. I remember from trying to catch one myself, uh, that they are nearly impossible to get. And chances are just Right! <laughs> well, we found one! Quest notice. Please find the Safari Holden Warden's lost gold teeth. They're around here somewhere. Word offered. <laughs> they hiked out there to put up the sign, but did not get the teeth. Room for items. Item, uh... Okay, bon Ice heal, super heal, elixir, hyper potion. Can I use the carpos? I cannot use the carpos. Can I use the protein? I'm going to toss carpos because I don't think I can actually use any more stat boosting items on Pikachu. DM32. That might have been worth it. Oh. Oh, I remember why I thought you needed to first person reach the secret house. Getting worried that no one would wear a campaign prize. Grats, you have one. You don't have room for this fabulous prize. I remember why I was so certain of, like, that you need one to get the other. Because... Yeah, don't need this. Because I got the gold teeth the first time I got this deep on my first playthrough. And then I ran out of steps and had to come back with another go. Oh, yeah, it's surfing there. Nice. Like, I had 20 steps and it 
to get to the guy it was 21 or something stupid like that. <laughs> I was so disappointed. Now let's... Let's teach HMO3 to a Pokemon quick. Which is... I almost read a dumb nickname in there where there wasn't one. I thought I named my Lapras Larry, and now I am kind of mad that I didn't name him Larry. Like, it's perfect. There we go. Oop, sorry, game's over. God, I... It's one of those benefits of hindsight. I honestly remember this game being so much more difficult than it actually is. In... Um, any regard because <laughs> I remember that taking so much time I remember being stuck on Brock for so long that I almost ran out of money for potions and pokeballs and barely got the last couple of things last Pokemon that I needed needed to actually get a victory in N nickname the Warren Slowpoke he and Slowpoke look both like <laughs> so mean, but I love it. <laughs> so book came in, but I couldn't understand him. I think he's got a speech problem. <laughs> uh, I love Slowpoke. That is just such a fun, burpy Pokemon. There we go. Give the cold teeth to the warden. <laughs> or popped in his teeth. Thanks, kid. No one can understand a word that I said. Couldn't work that way. I'll give you something for your trouble. There's strength. Use strength. There we go. Uh, let's teach this to someone. If I remember right, because my Charizard in the first playthrough had strength. So the Charmander... Oh, or I could put it on Lapras. Now, nope. You're getting strength. Stretch, growl... Wait. The Charmander knows Dig, but the... Why do I have a Diglet then? Well, who knows? I certainly don't. Bag limits. I still hate them. They're still horrible. And while I understand why, it makes it so much more painful. I never played the original Gen 2 games, but I'm pretty sure, like, Gold, Silver, Crystal... If they didn't get rid of them, they definitely made them more lenient. Like, Crystal did a whole lot for... For a... It was stupidly optimized. They... That game... The lead programmer in one glorious Herculean night completely reprogrammed the entire game to a point that they were able to put the entire map of this game and all 151 Pokemon plus any new one plus all the new ones that Gen 2 added into that game which is still wild. Nope, nope. Oh yeah, that there was enough bloat bloatware and actually probably the real thing that happened was with programming there's this somewhat serious No, it actually is a term. It's programming. Everyone's a huge weirdo. It's almost a requirement to get into the to become a programmer but there's this thing called code golf where you where you take a program it could be it could honestly be anything that's 
uh, size or computationally Im impressive. The big thing is to up. Oh, that's dig, not strength. The big thing is to optimize it in a way that it takes the let. Oh, hey, a rare candy. Nice. That takes as little memory as possible. Like the smallest program size to take a 10 gigabyte file and turn it into a 1 gig or, sm or smaller. And the way they do this, aside from the first pass is just general code optimization, where you look at something and say, okay, this is, this can be better. I think I need to heal my Pokemon. Like this 10 line function can be rewritten with faster, less computationally in intense means. Uh, this loop can be unrolled where instead of looping through uh, something, it's like 8-bit? Yeah, actually it, it is 8-bit. Or were you talking about Colt Code Golf? Because this is 8-bit uh, sprite games where each if I remember right, each, uh, I think 8-bit refers to, oh yeah, no, I remember what 8-bit <laughs> refers to. It's color complexity, how much, how many bits of data that you can dedicate to sprites, color palettes, things like that. One of the shifts from, yeah, one of the shifts from 8-bit to 16-bit is... I believe memory size, where the way that things are referred to in memory is that you have a bit, which is a zero or one, a byte, which is four, yeah, it's four bits, and then a word, which is a variable amount of bytes. And the more bits you're able to dedicate something, and the larger your words are, then I love how broke the swimmers are because where the hell are they keeping money in that speedo? So 8 bits only have, um, as in, applies 8 bits to deal with, which, let me do it manually. 1, 3, 7, 15. Dang it. I believe it's 250. Yeah, it'd be 255. Yeah, because it's... Two, <laughs> two... Two to the eighth. That's what it is. Two, that's how many bits that they have, or how much data that they can use to represent colors and memory size, whereas, well, I don't really have a good representation offhand to reference, but that's 8 bits for this entire Pikachu sprite, and compared to modern day systems, which a gig, of, a gig is uh, like a thousand plus it's a little over a thousand no a kilobyte is a thousand a gigabytes ten times that dogs and burgers on special today <laughs> beach house but the point is that there is a stupid amount more memory in modern systems. Whereas... I don't remember all of it off the top of my head, but... It's not a lot. And going from 16 to... or 8 to 16 increase the amount of complexity that can be displayed in the sprites, which is why you get things like... Well, most Super NES games were so much more complex than NES. That's just what's easy to see. 
<laughs> now, where was I before I got distracted on computer hardware? Because <laughs> I do feel... I feel kind of bad when I go off on a rant about, like, how things work at a... Billion Biden gig. Yeah, there. That's it. Billion. And keep in mind that one of those is... I think I have 32 billion bytes of memory alone. And let me compare that to my... Yeah, my PlayStation 2 original memory card. 8 megabytes. Which is a whole lot less. <laughs> And still a good-sized memory card. <laughs> okay, I am not going to be too concerned about fighting every swimmer. I say as I take a beeline directly to a swimmer. <laughs> uh, mostly because they're all water types, which... And I would like to get a couple more levels just to get... Like, before 70. But yeah, no, I... Part of it is that I'm kind of tired at the end of the day, usually. So a lot of what I say, especially when I try to go into a more technical topic that I haven't really thought about in a long time, I feel gets a bit rambly and out there. And also, it's a topic that I haven't thought about in a long time. So, it's a lot of, I'm pretty sure, or you get the vibe of. <laughs> but I also don't really have the time to... Oh, mitosis. Alright, then. Let me pop that up. Yeah, that's one thing that I was excited for this stream, that... There we are. We have a friend. A small friend. But there was a new update to Live 2D that it used two bread better than one. In theory, in practice, it means same amount of brain cell. Why the amount of, of people who need it? <laughs> Or the Poke Life. Oh yeah, the Poke Life's. Uh, so I'm doing a Nuzlocke challenge where I'm only going through this game with the Pikachu. I can only fight with Ham Radio here. And given that I wasn't entirely sure how that was going to be, especially early on, I gave myself three lives to do it. Yeah, it's a Nuzlocke. And just in case, because I'm like, okay, if I die like super early or because I make a objectively bad decision that doesn't pay off. I don't want to just end the stream because I think it is kind of an interesting idea to see how far I can push a playthrough with an electric type. Oh, hey. Perfect. And I decided to give myself three lives. Blub. <laughs> and so far, it's been going stupidly well. Like, after I over-leveled everyone, it it's actually reminds me of a complaint I had about Sword and Shield. I was able to very quickly uh, get five levels ahead of all the, of the first gym leader. And then from that point on, I always remained five steps ahead of the gym leader, because to level one Pokemon ended up with me leveling all of them, and then it kind of, uh, got out of hand. <laughs> Something similar happened with that. Like, Pikachu's the only one fighting, so he might be getting trickle XP from these guys, but it's still XP, and it still adds up, leading to, you know, the trainers are level 30. I'm almost level 70. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that 
I won't be taking, like, any more lives. Because I'm pretty sure that by the time I'm done with Elite Four, maybe I'll die once or twice there. I'll probably... I'll probably be level 100. Actually, you know what? I'm going to tweet that quick. Just take a quick screenshot and... <laughs> Nice. Edit. Uh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> ah. Ah, good thing is that the frames have definitely... I, I had a massive frame rate issue earlier on for anyone who just came in. It seems to have Settled, uh, I had to update OBS to make the new uh, Live 2D things work, and that kind of messed everything up for a hot second. But yeah, I would be kind of surprised if we don't end the game at level 100. And enough stats to fight God. Not Arceus. Not any religious deity. The devs. <laughs> uh, it's been a pretty fun time. Cause this game's kind of dumb. <laughs> okay, I'm just not going to deal with the tentacruel. Level five. A level five enemy. Dares challenge the might of this chonk. A chew. <laughs> Hi, a beauty. Because honestly, I'm at a point where it it doesn't even make sense to fight the local <laughs> the local mons. They're just so weak. <laughs> I feel like I was talking about something the hot second ago. Oh, right! Dev facts about this game. About how they... They unified the... Oh! Hello, koi fish! Man, Thunder would be so great if it could hit consistently. As I said before... <laughs> Oh. Oh, dang. Welcome to the only time I'll take damage. <laughs> Come on, hit him! No! Wrong person! Am I actually... Am I actually going to take damage? This, how am I be... This is why confusion is such a hated effect. Because it's really, really good. Oh my god! Uh, body slam him. Thank you! I. God. <laughs> that was so bad. You want to swim to Seafoam Islands? Oh, that's nice. Let me just take some super potions and make sure we're not checking out another life. Because goddamn. Well, in all the. In my defense. I was still the most powerful mod on the field. I did most of the damage there. It just so happens that if I got really unlucky and got a crit during that, yeah. <laughs> there we go. Super effective, that is what we like to see. 
Yeah, what I was trying to say earlier was, uh, we got the lead concept artist who I believe, and if anyone knows, feel free to correct, Ken Sugimoto, who, to go through all of the, the many different concept arts that they had and sprites that they used from the first game with all well, the first versions of the of Gen 1 which they look so off model cuz again they were done by wildly different ooh so big must keep you dry in water yeah this lapras does but he went through gave him a more unified concept and actually kind of nailed down I don't remember if he used like the anime and those designs as a guide or if this if it was the other way around like he had already done it for the anime he just made them into sprites for the game because it's the weird... I like to describe this game as it's the game of the anime, of the card game, of the game. Because <laughs> it's like... This was made after Pokemania was a big thing, and red and blue were red and green if it, for the original Japanese releases. We're were already a massive thing, like hugely popular. So it was made with a lot of hindsight and beta testing, essentially. <laughs> Cause I have I have mixed feelings with these types of games. They're in theory the idea behind like two or three different releases is to incentivize you to make friends, build a community, and just kind of connect with other people in order to finish your Pokedex. Like, if you... In order to finish Pokemon Yellow's Pokedex, all Gen 1 games have the same decks, but... As anyone who's played Pokemon knows, they have version exclusives that are in every dex. Like, you can't get Shelder or Weedle or a second cop or Raichu in this game. But, there are some. If I remember right, uh. Red has Shelder, or no, Red I think has like Scyther, Scyther, Blue has Cloyster, and this game has, I think Voltorb as a randomly encountered Mon, something like that, and the idea was that you would go out, talk to friends, um, uh, like, go to arcades or public spaces where people were playing on their Game Boys to say, Oh, hey, you play what you playing? Pokemon? Ooh, what version you have? Ooh, sweet, you want to trade? And just kind of strike up conversation and friendships. Which is well and good in an urban environment. In a safe urban environment, rather. It does not work in the middle of bumfuck nowhere rural U.S., Hell, it doesn't even work in the suburbs. <laughs> and so many people play these games were living out in the burbs. <laughs> Where if you had a friend that you didn't see at school, which that was another thing, you largely had to sneak your Game Boy into school because that was a valuable enough console that they did not like you taking it there. Assuming you could play it without it getting confiscated because you were, you're at school, you're not supposed to have fun. Like, oh, we're not even doing anything, it's lunch, calm down. <laughs> uh... Well, I wanna go over there. 
Yeah, because I think there's like a... Oh, there's just this dude. Oh, fine, let's battle. Let's battle you. Nope, need, la need Larry. And after a certain point, that's assuming they still have the same generation as you. I was always like a two or three behind. And yeah, the it it's gotten better now that they've been able to do like just online trading as a thing. <laughs> Level seventy. But back in the day, I just was not able to do anything. If I wanted to get... To get, uh... Ooh, crabby! To get any of the Generation exclusive Pokemon, I'd have to do what a lot of people did. Ugh, I do not have the PowerPoint to do this! <laughs> I need to go back to a focus center. Alright. Why? I really hope the sea foam. Yeah, we'll we'll just go home to Ballot Town. Because why not? <laughs> what a lot of people had to do was buy two versions of the game. Nope, nope. Get in there. And would like borrow a sibling's console or take their old one. I did this with my DS, because I had silver and... and... So, yeah, soul silver and diamond, which you could trade between. So I would trade between those to fill out Pokedex or just get the Pokemon I wanted. Because I had my old DS and my DS... Oh, you Unless, can I fly to the Seafone Islands? That might have been something they've added in the remake. I should check. It'd be nice if you could. And that was just like... The only... Nope, cannot. Guess we're surfing again. <laughs> Going at the speed of sound. We're back here. <laughs> it's like we never left. What, you think I'm gonna waste time going through what's just a walking segment? Hell no. <laughs> uh, that was like a main criticism of what a, of these games where is just, oh, that's a horrible cash grab. You release two versions in order to get all the cool things. Yeah, we're not fucking around with Krabby. I forgot about Guillotine. That is a one-hit kill move. Something which notably, I don't think it has appeared in any generation except for Gen 1 for a while. Because the Gen 1, if... It's not a danger, but if it crits for me... But if they get a random crit, and I have a huge chance of crit because uh, my level's just so much higher. I'm just dead. There's nothing can be done. Just goodbye. That's another reason I have the life counter. Because god damn. Like, no, the... People just bought multiple copies because that was the only way they were able to get everything. Okay, we're... I... I know I have Repel. And it is its time to shine. It's either... Okay, boys. There we go. We have peace of mind for like, I don't know, five seconds? Couple minutes? <laughs> Not long enough. <laughs> oh, I can fall through these. <laughs> Alright. 
Next hole. Mm, well, I see no reason not to jump down here. Like, it's fair. Uh... Danger! Fast current! Hmm... Which means I don't think I can get... I can get through there because the current's still on. Boulders might change the flow. Alright. But let's... Let's go up because we still have the second boulder. Plus... Whatever else, what other bullshit we have to see along the way? <laughs> oh! Okay! <laughs> I'll take that. Uh, okay, I think I see what you have to do here. This. This reminds me of a roguelike game, old net hack, where like the floors are randomized to a degree, but those effects wore off. Dang it! But there was still you could be guaranteed a few floors in specific, and one of them was called Sokoban, which got its name from a I think it was like a Japanese puzzle game for either old computers or maybe just straight up the SNES. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Sweet! I think that blocked off that current down here. Aha! You! First legendary! But the whole thing with that is, it's pretty much the same thing as these types of puzzles, where... Okay, first I'm going to double team a couple times to make sure I can't get hit. Because that is... The level gap has closed. And it's a nice type, which were rough in early editions. Ouch. Okay, hope this doesn't hope this doesn't kill you. Hope this doesn't kill you. Hope this doesn't <laughs> And now we throw balls at it. Wait, I'm, I still only have great ball. I missed. Oh. Right. It's... These things have catch rates so low that... It's possible for your balls to just miss and it not even... It's a quirk of only this game where if you're not using a strong enough ball or the catch rate's so low, like right now when I'm using a great ball when... I really should have picked up an ultra ball. Holy shit. So that's another life gone. No. Well then. Ow. That is... I... Probably shouldn't mess around with the legendaries until after I've beaten the game. Actually, I probably shouldn't mess around with the legendaries at all. <laughs> oh, that hurts. <laughs> and again, this is why I have lives, because it's perfectly... It's definitely possible to beat this game without having to, uh... 
rely too heavily on things like the, uh... Or, yeah, you can just unga bunga your way through the single type. Provided you're not an idiot. That's a big ass tonight. All right. Give me 10 of these. Now, give me 20 of these. And 13 of these. Oh, thank God, full heals. And more of these, if you please. Yes, you are about to make my inventory so much easier to manage. Because we don't need any of these now. <laughs> full heals will just do it all. Ooh, Master Ball, Full Restore. <sighs> and I'm pretty sure Arcticuno doesn't come back. That you only have one chance, regardless, <laughs> to catch them. Oh. Thank you, game. Yep, oh, man. All right. It is going too fast for me to get in there. <laughs> ah! ah! Well, that blows. And here I was, so smug that we were functionally invincible. Slowpoke! Come on, buddy. Swear to God, don't crit. I want the friend! Mm. No, the friend! <laughs> I have to redo this? Oh, I guess I didn't see it to completion. Alright. Yeah, I, d I never went through for this one. I'm pretty sure, and I hope I can see it. Eh, we're just gonna ungabunga here. It either is or is not. Yeah, I guess it's just a good reminder that when the cap is only 20, you're trying to stall for time, and it's, you know... A legendary that does not fuck around. <laughs> that you're gonna find out. <laughs> uh, but you know what? That's outright oh, repel. <laughs> it's kind of fitting for uh what happened. I'm I'm accidentally mirroring my first run through here. Cause the first time, I didn't know what the heck to make of the of these. I just I just knew that these random birds were stupid hard to catch. <laughs> ah. I like anything nope. So we do need the other boulder. <laughs> Dang. Or what? Where am I? What? Okay, I think it's one up through here. Cause maybe running away. Okay, so that pu that boulder push stuck. So it's the other boulder push that needs to get got. I see, I see, I see. Okay. One level below. 
below the top. Yeah, no, I screwed up the legendary, the legendary uh, capturing the first time. I knocked out everything. I knocked out Arcticuno, Zapdos, and Moltres. And then I did my best to capture Mewtwo. But you know what I thought? You know what seemed like a smart idea to me at the time? After beating the Elite Four, having no challenges, and having the Master Ball proudly in my possession, I thought, no, this is still too precious to use. It's one of a kind. I don't want to use it. I'm going to try to get this with Ultra Balls. So I ran out after trying time and time again and thought, Okay, I'm not going to turn off my Game Boy in order to restart and try this from the top. I am going to do the objectively dumb thing. And instead... Oh, there's definitely something here. Hey-o! That would kind of would have been nice a bit earlier. And I'm just going to faint him. Why? I will never know. But I guess in my mind it was better to lose the highly valuable Pokemon than the inventory item that I only had one of. <laughs> oh, I should be able to get through. Yeah, that was... Yeah, Arcticuno ain't coming back. Oops. Uh oh. I don't know, I guess that's just one of those things that makes absolutely zero sense in with any degree of hindsight. But when you're young and stupid and going through these games without That was like the first RPG I've played. No, the second. But it was the first one that, the first one in the in a traditional JRPG style, because I did play Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga beforehand, and just did not understand what to do with it. <laughs> in the slightest, I did not level. I would run away from most any fight and get kind of upset that that everything was so hard. Okay, where... Where's the exit? I've had enough, I would like to go home now. And by home, I mean to the active volcano island so I can beat up the old man who rules there. I can't... I cannot ascend from here. The Seafoam Isle. The Seafoam Islands turn me around so much. Like, where. Okay, so that's. I'm back where I was. That contributed to how I got there. I think down? Maybe there's freedom in this direction? So that's a transition to. I am confusion. This is the warning. Eh. My thought is that this the warning for the super fast current was here. Which would make sense because I had to block off here to get I don't know, this is starting to feel right. And oh! How did I get over there earlier then? <laughs> this is just... I don't know, but we're out of there and we never have to go back and you're getting beaten into pulp. For no other reason than to make me feel better.
But yeah, like, I've played... God, I should get the Game Boy Advance expansion on Switch, because I am so happy that they've started putting, like, Game Boy games on there. I have mixed feelings over the fact that you have to pay the premium online to get... just to get half-decent emulators, if we're being honest. Nintendo isn't good about emulating its own stuff. I think, yeah, there was like a minor controversy when the 64 stuff first launched that it was found that they stole and were running a build of Moopin 64, which is like the premium, or like one of the better Nintendo 64 emulators. And like they tweaked it a bit and figured out what, and optimized it for Switch, but underneath everything, it was still just mooping. <laughs> On one hand, it's hilarious that they got caught given how horrible well, Nintendo can be to anything fan related. Special emulation. It there was a time when it was super easy to find all sorts of Nintendo ROMs on the internet, but then they cracked down so hard. <laughs> Nintendo is the company of cease and desist. Cause you also see that meme of <laughs> of hey. What's your fate? Give us links to your favorite, your favorite Nintendo songs of all time. And everyone just posted, this video has been, has been delisted over and over again. <laughs> so it's, it's oddly validating how much I love and will advocate for emulating and ROM sharing and all that. Then at the end of the day, Nintendo basically admitted, yeah, you did a better job than we ever could. We're not going to pay you for it or say that we're sorry. And we're still going to try to figure out how, how to send the makers a cease and desist letter. I'm not sure if they're actually trying, but it's probably under some very specific usage that emulator creators are completely able to do to make software environment virtual machines of old hardware which is amazing and i love that protection but i'm sure if nintendo thought they had a good ground if they had grounds to stand on they would probably start going after emulators But on the other hand, I really can't be mad because it's one of the things I've always said, like, make these games available and people will stop pirating. You don't get people who don't want to play the games and aren't willing to buy them doing all this pirating. There have been studies that shown the best way to stop internet pirating is let people have them for a fair price. In all honesty, I would... I'm not super jazzed about the fact that you have to pay a monthly subscription or a yearly subscription to get at these emulators, these official ROMs. I think it would be much better if they either release, like, a... Oh, the Super Mario Collection. This is every game from the NES to 64. 30 bucks. Or, here's Super Mario 64. 5 bucks. Here's Super Mario Bros. 1. It's a dollar. Which, they were a lot better with that on the virtual on the Wii Virtual Shop. 
Like, a $5 card would get you an NES, Super NES game, some, something in that price bracket. In, and there was also a uh, better selection than the emulators. <clears throat> I'm going to be honest, it it's kind of weird to see all... Like with the NES and Super NES, so they have a lot of niche games that maybe were like cult classics or like, no, nah, no, nah, people should know about these. They, they need some love. Which is cool. It's cool to promote weird niche games. But also the fact that it was big announcements that they're like, hey, we're adding the classics. We're adding the ones that actually sold this system and what people bought it for when it came out. Whereas, like, oh, s sweet, we're at Cinnabar. Door's locked. All right. So I just conduct experiments and burned out building. Our Jim's plane is on, man, has lived here for decades. Oh. Oh, Pokemon Mansion. Oh, oh, I remember one fun thing they did in Crystal, or like Gold Silver Crystal, in order to save space. They destroyed Cinnabar Island. They said, oh yeah, it was a volcanic island and the volcano went off. That's why there's a fire type gin there. Why? Because it was so much easier not to have the full town in there. I lived for the weird reasons like that that they use to save space. <laughs> Alright. To the mansion. Well, that's the lab, which... Eh. We could revive this fossil we got into, I think, an ammon... Ammon... Ammonite? But, eh. God. This music... I don't remember the music in Pokemon Mansion being that good. Ooh! Pupper! Alright, don't kill the dog, don't kill the dog, don't kill the do dog! Eh, dang it. I swear, the only way we can get... Oh, nice. The only way that we can get Pokemon now is being very lucky with them. With an Ultra Ball. Because the fact that you can... <clears throat> that level discrepancy in later games... Is a, a factor in how easy it is to catch things. Good change! I like that. However, my favorite features in... Late in like the newest generation Pokemon games, definitely Pokemon Arceus. You have no idea how much I love that I can just freaking catch Pokemon. All right, you're getting by slam for that. I can just go out and catch Pokemon without having to enter a JRPG battle. Every single time. <laughs> like the fact that, oh yeah, you can battle and grind if you want to. Or, yeah, if you just need, or if you just want to run out and catch 20-something Pokemon and throw things at a Snorlax, you can just go do that. That's a perfectly valid use of your time here. In fact, that'll... Grow... <laughs> it's literally just puppy. It's pupper. It's the best of boys. Pokemon with a friendly nature. However, it'll bark fiercely at anything invading its territory. Yes. I'll never use it. But this... Is... Bubber. Pubbers. So, such good of a boy or girl. They needs to be plural. God. 
Music slaps. Like, I get why Scarlet and Violet had, in my opinion, less features than Arceus did in that regard. On account of how... Ooh! Radicate. How they were definitely being developed side by side, and... Arceus' spinoff was farmed off to... Well, not fully farmed off. It was... A lot more work was offloaded onto a, an additional studio. Now, third-party contractor. Hind feet are webbed. They're that can swim in rivers and hunt for prey. Nice. Of all the little details in the Pokedex, that's always been a highlight for these games. Hmm. That's a note. But it's just... Uh, part of the reason I never finished Violet... Aside from... The host of just visual problems and the fact that... They're adding actual clothes customization as a DLC? That's... okay? Is that just felt bare bones? Using the repel was a good idea. Can't sleep? No. Secret switch. Press it? Yeah. Who won? This game understands what's up. <clears throat> it just was difficult to get through. Because it Arceus, I know I've said this before, it Oh. It made me feel the same way as a very young me felt when playing through this game for a first time. Like, I wasn't entirely sure what to do, what to go, what would be around next corner. It felt completely different, and it was so much, so much fun to just wander around and explore. <laughs> Burglar! <laughs> I guess it's just how much I enjoyed that game has probably colored my opinion on Scarlet and Violet. It has a good story. And it is nice to see them moving towards an open world game or style of game, which a lot of people really, really since open world became a thing. Like, we era, era and onwards have been wanting so much for it. Please give us some open world Skyrim like like game. We would want that. We want that so much. Alright, so there's a door there. Ooh, a journal. We're just going to keep on applying the bug spray. Until we run out. Because this is mostly so I can listen to the music. July 5, Guiana, South America. New Pokemon was discovered deep in the jungle. <laughs> Alright, what do we got here? Ah, calcium. I can't use any more stat boosting items. <laughs> I'm pretty sure calcium and the like all worked by upping a Pokemon's... Uh, Stat XP, which is the system they used before they moved to EVs. Oh, I cannot get through there. But, which I'm pretty sure uh, Pikachu's has been maxed out for quite some time. Ooh. Okay, that's really cool how they... Make this a balcony going off into empty space, and that rubble's supposed to be like a collapsed section of roof. Ah, that's what I remember. Alright, we... Ju July 10th. We christened the newly discovered Pokemon Mew. <laughs> oh, so... 
Here's my favorite thing about Mew. You don't... You're not supposed to... Find, be able to find Mew in the game. Like, across all three versions, they do not appear wi wild at all. Ooh! Secret Stare. They... There was a theory that a boat that you could find when you surf to, uh... Off of the SS Andock was supposed to be a secret that you could, if you did all these this crazy stuff, like beat the game so many times, have this team uh, catch all the Pokemon, whatever, that you'd be able to move the truck and... Oh, this mentor once lived there. That's kind of sad. And would... Oh, Magnemite! I love those. And you'd be able to encounter this legendary Mew. Well, it turns out the original plan was to only have 150 Pokemon in the game. There was... Mew was never sub... Oh, and Magneton. It's just three friends sticking together. <laughs> it's so derpy. It's so dumb. It's the same vibe as Diglett, but somehow even weirder. The perfect boys. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, exactly, Gobs. It is just three dumb boys saying, Mom, we got glue on us and we're stuck. We're... Help. <laughs> it's perfect. How are you doing, Gobs? Hope you're... No earlier that you're... Is a weird day, which has seemed to be true for a lot of people. But hope you're doing better, and glad to see you around. Hope you're at least having fun work. Yeah, everyone go follow Gobs. They do a whole lot of super fun craft streams and a absolutely adorable chill games. Highly recommend! Best lurk stream. So, you're stuck? Try jumping off over there. <laughs> yeah, we're just continuing on with our Pokemon... Nuzlocke, where we managed to die once again. Because I decided to fuck around with Arcticuno, and did I find out? <laughs> what was I talking about? I... I've completely forgotten what I was talking about. Uh, is this the way... Oops, oh, ice. Oh, the ice boar got me and then some. <laughs> this is, uh, when you don't have 50 levels, a 50 level advantage on the Pokemon, they can actually pose a threat. Especially when they crit twice. Oh, hello. Place is like huge. All right, Mew. Yeah, because originally there's only supposed to be 150. But you know what one of the game developers did? As a joke, in the junk data section at the end, the data that was like, we actually somehow didn't use this. He coded a new Pokemon, 100 points in every stat, could learn every move, which probably actually saved a lot of space because they didn't have to make a move list. They just let everything be valid. <laughs> Where my partner went. <laughs> Found him earlier. And did not tell anyone <laughs> the fact that they put Mew inside of this game. Let's see, February 6th, Mew gave birth. We named the newborn Mew too. Well, points off for unoriginality. And then later, after the game was shipped and released and was already a massive hit, <laughs> he said he came up to like either his supervisor or this was the lead dev going to the rest of the team saying, Hey, y'all wanna know what I did? 
Muse in the game. <laughs> like, wait. You did what? Mew wasn't... We... Mew wasn't supposed to be in there. We had room for Mew? I didn't know we had room for Mew. <laughs> so, they got an idea because, first of all, that's hilarious and an awesome little secret. And they put a little contest together where... I think it was just a sweepstakes. Put your name in the hat and whoever wins, wins. Where several winners would sh physically ship their game cartridge. Like first to a... Might have been Nintendo Power. But first to whoever was hosting this event. And then they would forward it on to the devs themselves. To Game Freak's main office. Because in order to actually get a Mew into the game, what they had to do was tell people, okay, make sure you have an uh, empty team, will all this stuff, or a Pokemon you're okay with losing somewhere on the first slot of your team, and we will get you your Mew. They generated on one of the workstations they used to run to build and run the game or test the game on. Okay, I think it's here that that's where I have to go. Yeah. Yep. They generated a whole new ROM with a Mew already in the party and actually plugged in every one of these systems all one of these yeah they plugged every game they received into a game boy plugged it into the computer that they generated the rom onto and traded with <laughs> and traded with themselves <laughs> and they also set a special tag on the muse that it said oh the original pokemon mons was so ridiculous you know, the, there's a glitch that I'm going to look up between now and the next time I stream, if I remember, which is a big if, that Cinnabar Island, you can, well, where we are right now, you can get Pokemon from the last place you visited, because the way the game handles uh, loading areas is... Towns do not have lists of Pokemon that can appear. So, when you go to Cinnabar, which has area, which has uh, water that you can fish in, or surf, no, you can surf along and encounter Pokemon that way, but you don't have a level list because it's a town, it doesn't have one of those, It'll draw from the last list that you encountered. Because that was the last thing loaded in memory, and it just doesn't load a new list into there. Meaning the original stuff is still perfectly valid. Which means if you do something stupid, like, oh, say, go from an area that has a weird list, or an incomplete level list, and go to Cinnabar, you are able to do things like have the game load your inventory as a wild Pokemon, which is what led to all the glitch Pokemon. Like if you catch Masingo, one of the things that it does is I think whatever's in the 12th or 13th spot in your inventory gets 256 copies of it. Because that's the inventory slot the game is referencing when it tries to load in a Pokemon for Missingo. <laughs> it's so jank and silly. We have failed to curb its vicious tendencies. What was the first part? Mewtwo is far too powerful. Yeah. Because <clears throat> this game was built without... Uh-oh. Where am I now? <laughs> Normally when you build software from such a low level like you would for this game, it has memory protection. 
where the program will look and say, okay, you're trying to access this function is trying to access memory location 0x uh, FF868C, which it's only allowed indexes 0 through FF0000. That is an invalid access. We are not letting you load. Try again. In order to save space on the cartridge, they did not put in any memory protection. There are no checks or anything like that. Instead, they're just, their whole solution was, what does this guy have to say? I find stuff lying around. Nice. Entire solution was simply, we are going to make sure that we do our due diligence and code this game so it doesn't reference items out of bounds. But if you do things like the Cinnabar Island trick, it still references things. But it's also robust enough because they coded it in mind that if something happens, we can't just have the game crash. <laughs> We have to keep it going in a usable state. Meaning this software is about as tough as the hardware it was run on. And keep in mind, this a Game Boy has been found in a barracks in Iraq that was completely bombed out. And they just turned on the power. It worked. Old Nintendo products were stupidly durable. <laughs> they literally survived a bombing raid. The system is currently sitting in the, Smith the Smithsonian, I believe, uh, whatever the culture wing is, or maybe art. It's powered on as just looping through a game of Tetris. I it still works. <laughs> If anything, they had to do maintenance on the cartridge because old Game Boy, like original Game Boy and Game Boy Color games, uh, the way they say it's conducted in my size. Oh, that's nice. He's just studying down there. The way they worked is that <clears throat> you would have a watch battery inside of, them. you know, have my original Game Boy Color. My brother left our original that gray Game Boy in a car for weeks and cooked the screen. Oh, oof. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, old uh, screen technologies didn't really do well in a literal oven. I remember once where I, because what my family always did for longer car rides is we'd have, me and my brother would have our Game Boys in there, and we'd play, and when we left the car, we'd turn it off and tuck it under the seat. Uh, one night, I could not remember a town name, and it was really bugging me. So I went out and to the car to grab my Game Boy, because that's where you stored it. <laughs> Fortunately, I lived far enough north that the bigger problem was the game's freezing and the batteries dying overnight because of the cold than actual damage to the system. Um, uh, dang it. Elixir, Hyper Potion, I have Dig. <clears throat> Had to share the original, which means my brother got most of the time. Saved all my birthday money and allowance to buy myself that color. Hell yeah! Because I had Game Boy Advance, which was a birthday present or Christmas, one of the two. So many items! Which... Okay, we're just going to use this now. <clears throat> Which worked really well and still ran Game Boy and Col Game Boy Color games. There we go. And we just dig out. <clears throat> but I remember the grind of allowance money and chore money to buy up, save up for... Oh, that's a mark, not the center save up for new systems. Because I remember, if you couldn't get it for Christmas, which was often the case, you would, my parents would always give me, 
GBF's next system also have to do the same. Nice. Because I had a uh, NES and a 64. I really, in hindsight, both me and my brother wish that we didn't do this, but <clears throat> we saved up for a GameCube. And that's the thing that it's one of my favorite memories of childhood. Me and my brother would pool our money so often for new games. Because we were... Because we were more or less like of the same mind with a lot of things. Of, ooh, we want the new Mario, we want the new Zelda, or we want a new system. <clears throat> so we would always put our money together to try to save up. So we'd both be working for... And that's why I mention him so much when I probably technically shouldn't for like lore reasons but you know what my face is on the channel so I do what I please and because so much of my collection I don't have a clue who it belongs to like we pooled our money got gifts given to each other and saved up for systems so often it the 64 because we did sell the NES, which I wish we didn't. It, we should have kept that. And the GameCube, in order, which I also wish we didn't do, because the GameCubes were robust. The Wiis were not. In order to get a Wii. Cool, you could work. Yeah, it, it was so, so nice. I, I love my brother so much. And that's why I will never tell him what my channel is, because he might search the VOD archive and hear that. <laughs> and that would give him an even bigger head, and we would not like that. Right. Caterpillar evolves into Butterfree. I'm going to answer these all wrong in order to fight the trainers. Inflate the ego big and round. Big and round. <laughs> but I honestly believe that he has as much of a claim to any of the systems we own, except for like the Switch, our Nintendo Switch and my PS5s, because those I bought recently. Everything else, like, he has our, he has our entire GameCube and Wii collection, because he asked for it. <laughs> and I have a PS3 because he hasn't asked for it. Like, all he has to do to get pretty much anything in my retro collection, which right now I have the 64, or PS2, which I've been using it for some things, but in terms of interest, he had more games on it, so I guess it technically should be his. Uh, the PS3, which was just kind of, he had it for a while, but said, yeah, you can take it. I know that you, you're probably going to use it more than I do. I just haven't used it much. But, like, between that, we also have swapped ROMs around extensively. So we, on our computers, have a largely the same collection. <laughs> but no, that is just... Ah. That's why I keep on bringing him up. That I cannot talk about my retro collection because it's not mine <laughs> it it's just as much his because he helps fund it like as i said we saved up together we would both do chores uh, help each other out with them save whatever money we got from other things and eventually when we had enough we would buy the system and start going at it like, ooh, I want this game, or oh, yeah, I'd say, ooh, this Harvest Moon game looks cool. Yeah, we should get that one totally. Or, ooh, I really <clears throat> want this uh, Chibi Robo game. Yeah, that looks cool. I really want to get this baseball game. Yeah, go for it. Which, amazingly, I gave him a lot more grief for <laughs> sports games growing up because I thought they were kind of dumb. But it's just. Mine's for five Pokemon League badges. Yes! Eh. When? Uh, I'm reminiscing. 
brother of the GameCube and our original N64. He bought me a used N64 Christmas when I was 22. I'm gonna try and get him to mod my GBA to have a backlit screen and connector so I can stream. That is so cool. I... I have heard a lot about the various mods you can do to things in hell. I have a Nintendo 64, or not 64, well I do have two Nintendo 64 controllers, but those are stock. I have a, two NES controllers that a while ago I have, it was a birthday gift again from my brother. As I said, he, it, it's something we both do together. <laughs> That he got this idea of getting me a Nintendo 64, 64 again, an NES controller alongside a conversion kit that would make it uh, Bluetooth so I could use it on the Switch, which is, it is super cool how, how much you can do for mods like that. Yeah, and I want, I really want to get a second one for a Super NES controller, because that way... It, between uh, the ROMs I have saved up on the Raspberry Pi and oh, dang it. as well as just the fact that those are the two basic uh, emulators on the Switch that would be like awesome to because I never had a Super NES I had the NES, the 64, and then GameCube <laughs> on <laughs> And it'd be nice to play those on, like, original controllers. As well as, uh... Ah, the coolest thing I think... Can I just straight up fight you? Oh, no. No. Oh. Oh, right. The only... Can I fight you anyway? There we go. I can do this regardless. There are so many cool mods out there. I think one of the favorites I've seen is, because uh, on a Raspberry Pi, you can load it with an emulator called RetroPie. And it's a general, general purpose uh, emulation platform. It has Game Boy, Game Boy Advance. <sighs> Need to relearn how to solder. Yeah. I need to learn how to... I have a general idea, but for the amount of tech projects, I am kind of amazed I have never had the need to... to solder. So I move around? No. It just hasn't come up. Like, I've got... I've only used Raspberry Pi kits and such that have, like, pre-solder or pre existing connections. It, it's the weirdest thing. <laughs> like, I've almost learned to solder five separate times. F fix up that pile of Furbies I have and do modding on my old systems. Yes, do it. That... Here's an idea. Mod the Furbies. Because you can do some wild things with those. It's just, I'm just lucky that way. I mean, maybe, but it'd be nice to learn how to solder because I have an iron and I could very easily get the solder just I was lost in the mountains when fiery bird Pokemon appeared so I enabled Blaine to find its way down oh cool <laughs> one talking that would be so cool because my mind goes immediately to the demented to the demented idea of the Furby organ where you modify their soundboards to get them to play a certain note and essentially sc or yes the long furby the furbipede i absolutely love those horrible demented things because the furby as a whole i that's a product that was meant to be cute wholesome a little friend a little robotic friend for your kid and people before the in internet grabbed onto and said, no, no, no. This is a thing of nightmares and we can prove it. Like, you get the story of... <laughs> yeah, yeah, we uh, fucked around with Articuno and boy did we find out! That ice chicken was not messing around. <laughs> Should be fine. 
After all, we count zero as a number here, so technically I have four tries not to screw this up. <laughs> but no, like, you get stories of Furbies saying things like, it's dark, I can't see. And then the power goes out. TM20. How the heck should I know what's in a T... Huh, I wonder what TM28 is. We're fighting you anyway. <laughs> as well as just like... I've really... I've had a button box sitting on my deck desk for forever. That... <laughs> I've been meaning to finish since, like, sophomore year of college, almost two, three years ago at this point. Yeah, three years ago. And... First of all, the big problem was finding a Raspberry Pi Zero. Because <laughs> I was going to use a Raspberry Pi 3, and then I realized, wait, no, this is way too much power. I, I could get by with a basic encoder, but I want to be fancy and have multiple presets based off of games so but this was in the height of the pandemic so there was a equipment or a chip shortage which means I could not buy a Raspberry Pi Zero and it just and also I had to learn like button matrices and the code for that which I've forgotten and then it, it's been a whole thing of can't get what I need can't learn what I need Blech. I really should get back into it. I, I just need a day to set aside and say, like, nope, on this day, I do projects. That is all I do today. Eh, maybe next month. <laughs> Innards of those beasts are really clever. Pretty much all the movements on one... Really? Well, I suppose it would be... From what I know about it, it would have to be, like, a microcontroller. And then one gear that probably spins up I don't think you no it definitely has batteries in it that's a given it's not that one gear isn't driving a tiny alternator <laughs> as cool as it would be but yeah I guess all the other movements power up one gear and let it spin ha! I'm Blaine leader of Cinnabar Gym fire Pokemon will incinerate all challengers ha! they're at burn heal and for like the eye movement and everything else, you could, if you have one gear going, yeah, the rocking, blinking, mouth flappings on one gear that spins backwards and forwards off a motor. Ah, cool. Yeah, that's what I figured. And then everything else is just running shafts or additional gears off of that. Oh, hey, level 48. This is, uh, closer. <laughs> Still 24 levels off up above him. And massive stat boosts. And the Rapidash sprite looks so cool. That is, that is just what I love about the old sprite based games. You're not. You don't have to have them exist in the world as a 3D model. So you can let them be a lot more dynamic. Like the pose Rapidash has in this game. Oh, hey, another level isn't something that would even look good in a 3D game. Especially because, again, with our canine here, that's a profile shot where Rapidash was the head-on. You don't have the flexibility to say, this Pokemon is... Oh, sweet, a Paralyze. <laughs> that this Pokemon will... Oh yeah, the AI is completely borked, which is why uh, the second to last gym leader used a super potion. Something that's been outdated by two. <laughs> you just can't pose them how you want. Rapidash from behind his memories. So stoked when I first caught my Pokemon into such a horse kid. Ah, <laughs> uh, ha. Badge heightens the special abilities of your Pokemon. Here, can I have this too? Make room for my gift. All right, all right. Yeah, that. I think that's why this game did so good. 
because it had something... I'm just going to drop the balls. I'm gonna drop my balls! <laughs> it had something for everyone. Like, it had... Horse Pokemon, it had various animals, cute things. It had... Like, Charizard was renowned for being a pretty badass design. And also for, at least very much appealing to me, it had a uh, robotic set type of things. So I've always loved that aesthetic and machinery, that sort of thing. And like just the electric Pokemon as a vibe, I loved so much. <laughs> well, at first, po Pikachu was my favorite. Mostly due to the anime. Like, as one of those basic bitches. <laughs> then after a while, like, looking at things, no, no, no. Oddish, Voltorb, and Magnemite. Mm. Top tier design. <clears throat> it's just... With 151 different designs, it... I mean, it has to have something for everyone. That's... That's pretty great about it. That's what's kept its popularity. Although I will go on record and say that... They can stop adding Pokemon now. There is over a thousand of these stupid things. <laughs> like, they straight up said on the new game that it is impossible to catch them all without... Resorting to doing something like, oh, my, I'm just going to put both these because I have a full revive and one revive, revive and one life left. So that's about perfect. Because they can't put everything in the game anymore. And there's some that you just have to trade from previous games, which can lead to a whole thing of. Trading from, like, one three gens back to a... Oh. <laughs> Guess I'm gonna need a key if I ever want to go back there. And so on and so forth. Uh, Pokemon... Fly... Viridian. Let's get that last badge. Which... Yeah, it makes, se it makes sense that they can't have every single Pokemon, because... God, there's like, what, over a thousand or something? Like, it's ridiculous. Catch em All was a lot more reasonable when it was like, one or two hundred. And Jim's Lear, hell yeah. I wonder who they could be. <laughs> but when it starts getting above a thousand... Hmm. Yo, Jam in the Making. Even I don't know Viridian Leader's identity. This will be the toughest of all gym leaders. Though the trainers here like ground-type Pokemon. Oh no. Also, because every gym had these and this one was no exception. Leader Giovanni. Yep. We are fighting Team Rockets. <laughs> Front. Hey, punk. Pokemon will cower the crack of my whip. Oh, I forget how intense the OSHA violations here or the animal rights violations are. Oh. I can just bash on through with electricity. Nice! <laughs> and the Taurus. Yeah, I think this was a very egregious case of how poorly optimized the original game was. They made the the move list better, but uh, Giovanni in red and green did not have a single ground type Pokemon. Like he was much closer to a normal type gym. Partially because there weren't many good ground type moves or ground types. <laughs> Some of the best moves in the game were normal. 
That's why I have Body Slam. I, I really need to get back into various hobbies and things, because I... I've had a bad run of just... Okay, we're just walking. Hey, oh Of, like, getting horribly busy or exhausted after I started something. Because I had an idea for, like, a program that would be pretty useful. A while ago, I noticed that whenever I was at work, I'd get notifications like, Oh, this person is online, or this person who I'm never able to even lurk in their streams is on in the middle of the day. I'm like, God. It would be so nice if I was able to just, like, pull that up on my home desktop when I was out. And I thought, wait, I know code. I know several programming languages. I can just do that. Ah, yes, Nido King. Well, they don't have many ground types. Nido King is regarded as one of the better Gen 1 Pokemons given the moves they can learn. Oh, and they are ground type. Never mind. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Man, I got a good start on that. I actually, the only things I had to do was set up, I had set, a, set up uh, the messaging client for the oh we're back here that was wholly unnecessary but nevertheless I had set up the mechanism for how messages would be passed between my phone and my computer which is simple lightweight I I have bad Wi-Fi at work so I wanted to make sure it worked on very low Wi-Fi well then I just got got busy and exhausted and did not have the time or energy to work on it. Which is a horrible feeling of knowing, oh, I started another thing and now it's just languishing. Or just straight up forgetting it and remembering at times when you cannot go and work on it whatsoever. Eh. And again, so sent you a thing on Discord, photo of a relic. I wanna see. Oh my god, a... I remember doing something similar. Like I don't think I've uh Man. I never did it with walkthroughs, but Animal Crossing. I had the same thing. A web page printed, printed that shit out of the library. Oh, amazing. That is the highest of vibes. That is, like, pure distilled nostalgia. Because I do it with Animal Crossing cheat codes. I'd go online and find... Because every item, every inventory thing, everything in that game had a universal code that you could give to Tom Nook and you'd get the item. Even if it was something that doesn't have a sprite when you drop it on the ground, like a Game Boy Advance. I think on my original save file, which I probably still have because we never deleted that town, there is a... Game Boy Advance, which you should never be able to get in the game, sitting in my gyroid. But I'd do the same thing. I'd look it up online, and because the codes were so long and hard to write down, I'd print out entire web pages of cheat codes and guides and things like that. Shoot, I think I have it uh, somewhere nearby, maybe? And uh, not on top of my desk or or printing out, yeah. I do have it, oh shoot. Secret Codes 2008 for consoles and handhelds. PlayStation 3, PlayStation 2, Game Boy Advance, PSP, DS, Xbox, and Xbox 360, and the Wii. 
I got it at a book fair in elementary school, and... God... Oh, you just buy this for ridiculous... <laughs> for all... And hope or check that you'd have, like, the... The random things inside of it. Like, never had Ratatouille for the Game Boy Advance, but I have a cheat book for it. Actually, I don't have <laughs> uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Ultimate Masters World Champion Turn Tournament 2006. Shoot, I... Oh, Final Fantasy 1 and 2 for the Game Boy. Yeah, I didn't have any of these, uh... Game Boy games. Let me flip through this, uh... See if I can find... Hey, okay, what... What page is the Wii on? 49. This is... This is reminding me. Let's see. Oh! I think I know what I, what I bought this book for. SpongeBob SquarePants Creature from the Krusty Krab. No, wait, no. Didn't have that one. They had, uh... The... No, actually, I think we did. That might be the one I bought it for. Or... Yeah. It, it was probably that single game. Because <laughs> I... Didn't have the PS3. Let me check what was on the DS if I owned any of those games. <laughs> uh, ooh, fans. I'm seeing not many that I owned, but a lot. Ooh, Dragon Quest Heroes Rocket Slime. I was so mad about that one because I really wanted that one. That was the reason I wanted a DS, just to get that game. And when I brought it up, God, I could not convince my parents to let me buy it because they're like, eh, I don't know. Tank. So it has tank in it and then it might not be appropriate. And I couldn't find like the any Nintendo Power review. I'm going to beat those three down there first. For just the one page ad that looked it looked so much fun, and yeah, just wasn't able to get it. Got it later, a whole lot later. I'm like, yes, this would have been a. I would have adored this game if they would have let me bought it. <laughs> oh, God, the shit we did before we had a smartphone in our all of our pockets. The amount of things. Because I still... And I am still so glad... Oh, dang it. Don't, that doesn't affect Sand Slash. There's still one... <laughs> We're going to heal! One walkthrough... Well, not really a walkthrough, more of a guide that I still reference sometimes now when I... Because Harvest Moon Magical Melody was my first... Harvest Moon, and I love that game. I will fight to say that that is one of my favorites and one of the best done farming simulators on the market. Well, not on the market anymore because of the GameCube game. <laughs> but there was this one like game FAQs sites of the whole just a raw text document displayed as a web page. No HTML, no CSS. <laughs> just sla forward slashes separating sections and all sorts of... There's some had some ASCII art to give a big title. I've referenced it so much to figure out, like, or to remember who likes what gifts. What, how many of this things do you, like how many pieces of clay do you need to ship in order to get the potter in there? 
what gifts will make this person show up, and it's just... Ah! <laughs> ah. That... Man. Old ASCII art. The whole vibe of, like, early 2000s internet. It was... there. You could get Blame War... Flame Wars, like, on forums, but they were still rare, en enough of a novelty that they were called Flame Wars. It wasn't just, oh, that's just Twitter being Twitter, always a dumpster fire and always something going awfully. It was just, oh, shoot, we had a massive Flame War on this forum the other day, and... We don't know what caused it. It kind of got to a point where the mods had to step in and tell everyone to cool it, and we're, we're back to civil. People have patched up and moved on. Like, it was starting to get feral, but it still kind of had that wide-eyed idealism that the original internet... Oops, wrong move. ...had of... No, we're just here hanging out in a fun space. Eh. Dude, I was on the I was on a forum the yeah game FAQs today because I was looking at I'm not gonna say the name although I'm, it's literally rare enough game that I could say it and nobody would have a freaking clue what I was talking about but I don't know. I wanted it to be a surprise for me <laughs> for no one else <laughs> but yeah it was a uh, it was a game I was ranting about on Twitter that I found a ROM for, and it was working, and it was an old, good old games, and this game was vaporware available nowhere else. And it was just a quick synopsis of the story of, uh, hey, what the heck happened in this game? Which was fun to read. And also, if you... I usually post a lot more, more on uh, Twitter than I do the Discord. I am making an effort, I just haven't had the time or energy to actually do much of anything on the Discord, which I should, because I, I want to build community there, but, oh, hey, there's a Discord advertisement anyway. But yeah, those are places that you can find me talking about a lot more things. I, I need to set up, I'll probably do it tomorrow if I remember. Uh... I wanted to post, uh, let's call them guides, on where to find some of these games I play, especially the rarer ones, in the Discord and Twitter. I post a lot of these sorts of random thoughts and things I think up and... Oh shoot, I also have to transcribe a bunch of my old game, rambling game theories onto Discord too, because I want a record. <laughs> yeah, it's just... It's a whole different vibe. Uh, I'm really glad that they... That, like, the server hosting for some of these old sites and memories still exists. Like, I can find the same book of cheat codes and... Oh, there's a dude up there. And the same forums and walkthroughs that I used. Like, back when I was playing Earthbound, I'm like, I have no idea what the heck I am supposed to do here. Okay, I'm going to the starman.net for a walkthrough. And they just still exist, and that's wonderful. Ha <laughs> ha this is my hideout. Plan to resurrect Team Rocket here. But you've caught me again. So be it, this time I'm not holding back. Once more, you shall face Giovanni, the greatest trainer. Oh, sixth greatest trainer. Still have the Elite Four. <laughs> but, I don't think it was it. What was I talking about? <laughs> Ooh, level 50. Let's not mess around here. <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, it's good that they still exist for now. Ugh, Earthquake. Because there's a... Uh-oh. There's kind of a problem that a lot of people don't realize. The internet is not written in stone. We're kind of living in the middle of 
Uh, we'll do a Body Slam. Hopefully the next Pokemon isn't as ground type, so we can get a couple more evades off. Oh, perfect. Unfortunately, the internet... Every server the internet's running on has a shelf life of... Holy shit, the crits! Okay, we're going to gamble here. Oh, good. He's also using double team. <laughs> but that's not going to matter when I just jock it. Like, they have a their lifetime measured in a handful of years, and it's only through rigorous data protection and replacement that things are work are lasting. Ooh, need of me. Uh, body sign. And the most <clears throat> the most surefire way to preserve the internet essentially is with very old methods. Like, people still use old-style magnetic tape. Because what they do is they run their super important, like, business critical or extremely critical, this has to survive data onto, like, a tape, the style that you'd use in the 60s. And then they store it in a cool, dry place. Like, there was a place by where I went to college, an abandoned gypsum mine that a data storage company... <clears throat> oh, shoot. <laughs> We're doing another double team, just in case. And, yeah, and data long-term data storage company would... Or bought out, made sure it was safe to be in, and... <clears throat> they would store any big data center or government data down in the bottom of it because it is the safest location. <laughs> but like, hard drives are okay. If they're not running, they... They're as good as the magnet... as the magnets on the disc... on the platter are. Uh... SSDs and solid-state stuff... Those are a bit weird because they actually use quantum mechanics for the mechanism. Like, it's quantum on and off for... for how you get a completely insulated cell to read a zero or a one. It's a whole thing, but I barely understand the hardware, and I'll be damned if I understand the quantum bits of it. Because I don't think anyone actually cared enough to say you have to know this and should <laughs> but that is especially when it's running not it doesn't last very long sure it's still on the scale of years but compared to a disc it's like in a consumer PC maybe 10 years for a platter half for like half as long as a platter for an SSD Damn 27. What's this? So, oh yeah, Fissure. Take out Pokemon with one hit. Made it when I ran the gym here too long ago. I wonder, can Pikachu learn Fissure? Because that could be dumb. Now, nah, Diglett can. I had it on my Doug Trio. Which, that's a pretty good one for Fissure because Doug Trios are pretty pretty fast, which gives them a good crit rate. Boost it a little bit, and... Bada bing, bada boom. Every round you can just murk a single Pokemon. Well then. We're making great time. In all honesty, I did not expect to be anywhere this close to the end. I kind of expected, like, half a stream more on this? Hmm. So I, uh, I am in the very weird position of... 
three games are super close to being done on the schedule. Because for this, in order to prove our point, like, we just have to beat the Elite Four. I still want to at least fight all the legendaries. Which, speaking of... I think this is where the power plant... Yeah, this is where the power plant is. Um, well, let me check the town map. I'll extend it enough that... Power plant. Okay, so it's actually north of Lavender Town. Which, there's a cave, so it's actually this direction. Because we still have a... A little bit more to do? I think I probably missed some trainers in Cycling Road, but at this point it's just where I don't think they're worth it. <laughs> I have... Zapdos and Moltres still. Moltres I know is on, uh... Oh, I guess we're going through this dude's house. Wow, you still haven't repaired this place? It's been so long, dude. <laughs> yeah. Our, Mol Zapdos is in the power plant, and... Moltres is in Victory Road. Along with some just other stuff... So we may as well. That way I'm thinking that with how the schedule is shaking out, we have... We'll have one more stream of this to go through Victory Road and smack the Elite Four, which I'm pretty sure we're high enough level to do. I'll probably have to use all my ethers for it, but you know what? Worth it. Oh, oh Pokemon. And then Eternal Darkness, which will be next week, Tuesday. I looked it up because I, I was thinking about it and curious. We only have two more streams left, or two more chapters of that. And we've been able to do, like, three chapters of stream. Oh, new Pokemaniac 2. Want to see my collection? So it might be possible that Tuesday we'll do uh, half stream of Eternal Darkness, and a half stream of this to finish them both off. And Chibi-Robo, uh, there might be two more streams, two or three more streams of that. It's a very weird game of, like, all the plot, kind of. Like, there's long gaps between the plot and that one, as as you have a couple of days of just cleaning, exploring, picking things up, and trying to figure, figure out, like, oh, if I go here at night, maybe? Nope, definitely during the morning. And two days wasted. <laughs> it could be super close or not. Power plant. Uh, I, I love this extra dungeon so much. Because, first of all, I... I have such a love of abandoned buildings, and I, if there was more of them and I wasn't certain that I'd be about as stealthy as a pile of china falling down the stairs, and would definitely be caught, you know, actually trespassing, I would definitely do urban exploration. Like, yeah, they, the most would be, be a fine, but... Also, I don't think there's anywhere interesting near me to explore. Like, a bunch of shuttered buildings, which... Eh. Oh, dang it. Now let's just go through for... Oh! Worth it! Eh, best to do it vicariously through video games. But yeah, that's the other thing I love. Voltorbs act like mimics and are just... appear as Pokeballs. <laughs> I don't know. Let's just try... No! 
Um, uh, 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 file. Rewind, rewind. Where's the rewind? Oh, fuck. I am not letting that be how I lose my Master Ball. That is... That is not how the Master Ball is... That is not how I am losing it. Set. I think I had the presence of mind to save before or after the gym. Right, so I have to redo the gym. You know what? This is the same kind of vibe. This has happened twice now. <laughs> on this specific stream where I do something so goddamn dumb that my only response is that ain't how I'm going down. <clears throat> uh, the general question is who do we want to raid tonight? Let's see, we got someone playing Raft, who, she's pretty cool. We got a chill Gundam building stream. Got two friends doing a horror game, a Labyrinthine, which I'd roll a dice to see who, who we'd go for. Um, anyone have any opinions? Or I'd also be down with the rating someone new if someone you know is uh, online and seems like a cool vibe. All right. Give that another minute if anyone has an opinion. Pretty sure I know who the first two are. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, oh, shoot. Or, or six. Another retro streamer who I've oh, raided a couple times uh, playing Xenoblade. But I'm going to roll for it. There are coincidentally six streamers, and I have all my D&D &D dice. Two. <laughs> right, sweet. We're right in Roomba. Alright, they are doing Chill Gundam building, which after losing the Master Ball, that is what I need. So yeah, thank you all for coming. I'll be here next, or this Thursday with some Okami. And yeah, see you around.